Yo guys and welcome back to another sport creation video and for today's creation we're going to be making Drogon from Game of Thrones. I've always said I was going to make this creation, I've been really looking forward to making Drogon and the other dragons whenever I could but I'd always been quite, uh, what's the word, quite hesitant, a bit apprehensive because there's two qualities of the dragons, particularly Drogon, which are very intimidating in sport. One is the absolutely massive webbed wings. It's very easy to make the wings just look really messy, busy, just very cluttered in sport. It does not look very good. So that's one reason why I've been very much, you know, apprehensive to, to doing this. And the other is Drogon's face. Technically all the dragon's faces. They're very characteristic. They're extraordinarily detailed. They have a lot of bikes, horns, quills, all sorts of things going on, which again is very complex for sport. It's also having it all, you know, done in like a proper pattern and having everything familiar. So I've always thought to myself that Whenever I do Drogon, I'll wait until season 8, which has just dropped a couple of days ago. I was originally going to do it as an animated creature, as an actual functioning small creature. So the more I looked at the references, the more I kind of realised, no, it's just not good enough. We're going to have to go the one-shot build. I would maybe one day like to mega build this. That is a far more stable version of a creation, which is ultra detailed, but can actually save in texture. It takes significantly longer though. So for this one, I wanted to go over one shot builds to ease us into the Game of Thrones genre. I'll probably be doing all three dragons again in the future. Actually, you know, animating, saving, texturing, etc. But for today, we're gonna go really over the top and go for a really, really ultra detailed creation. That, of course, inevitably crashed and I lost before I could finish it. <laughs> so, in the end, I spent about two and a half hours working on this. Probably think it's quite a long time to be working on the creation, but a simple fact of the matter is it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed doing all the musculature here. And currently I've been focusing a lot on the very, very large bulbous rib cage, which I've noticed a lot. They do have like really, really large rib cages. It's kind of crazy. So to make that look a little bit more, I guess, natural in sport, in a way to have it look not so bulbous, but more like a feature. I added in quite a lot of musculature and just definitions with the smoother parts. You can see the bottom of the ribs there, it's got like a quite a sharp edge. Also the very, very enlarged collarbones. I'm not really exactly sure what I was trying to make with these shapes. I just wanted to give the rib cage more shape in general. And also making the, the uh, thigh leg or the thigh muscles a lot wider as well. Since again, in sport, sport's got a really nasty habit of making things very bulbous. But I was quite lucky here because I knew I was going to be making a one shot build anyway. That means it will not animate towards the end. So I had to throw animation out the window. And that meant I could use a different limb entirely to attach on top of the regular limb on top of the leg. Which usually when it animates would be really, really nasty. But in this case, well, it's going to be frozen. So I'll go ahead and do it anyway. Next up are the back feet. Now this was quite interesting, and I was experimenting quite a bit with the back feet. I very nearly immediately used a bunch of textures parts just out of habit, and then I realized, I remembered, oh wait, I'm not gonna be able to texture this, therefore my palette is very, very limited. What's a very interesting thing about doing these one-shot creations is they cannot be textured. This is entirely in the build mode, and the entire point of them is that you build so much, so much past complexity with the complexity hacks, that the game does become unstable which means that you cannot save it, so you cannot animate it, and you cannot texture it. If I try, it will crash. So, in other words, because I cannot texture it, I have to use very flat colours, and I have to use a palette of colours, and parts that are similar to what I'm going for. Fortunately, Nail Downs are one of those pieces that actually do adopt the base colour of the creation. Currently it is white, later on it will be a very dark, dark, dusty, red, black colour. And the reason why I use Nail Downs a lot, so, this is actually like a bit of a throwback to really old school vanilla creations which would normally use a lot of nail downs. And I decided to use them here instead of just using the spheres because nail downs do tend to give like a bit of a nice natural texture. Now in the final creation some of the textures will be quite wrong. They will have these random really bright tanned parts and, that, and I kept that for two reasons. One, because it is a sport creation. I've come to notice if you have just nothing but modded parts, it really takes away from that familiar sport aspect and it can actually make the creature look surprisingly weird. Sometimes it just looks really uncanny or just really awkward, jagged, etc. Another reason for keeping a nail down parts is because it just offers, you know, a little bit of variety in colours and shades. Even if it is the wrong shade, it is still a variety. It prevents a creature from being one great big block colour. 
And the more I use it later on, I think the more it really pops out, particularly in the feet, but especially in the head. Now, when it comes to the wings, so like I said a moment ago, I kind of uh, kept on forgetting that this is indeed, you know, a one-shot creation, so I can't use retextured parts. I completely forgot that for, the, for this part of making the wings here. So these giant purple wing fingers, they weren't meant to be purple. You see, the part I used, if I were to texture it, it would, it would adopt the color scheme of the actual creation. But in build mode, it is purple. That was my mistake. But I didn't actually, you know, I forgot about that up until I started adding the membrane and I realized, oh god, <laughs> I've made a mistake. So I just kept it as is because it was a bit too late to change it. And there isn't really any other nice, neat way of, you know, getting that same effect that is the same color. So I just had to kind of stick with it and hope I can fix it later on. And to be fair, in the end, I actually feel like the webbing added a quite nice contrast. Even though Drogon has absolutely strictly no purple in him whatsoever, towards later on in the creature, it actually did offer a nice contrast to see where the fingers actually are among the webbing. And speaking of the webbing, this bit here is going to take a very, very long time. Uh, the way I did the webbing was with the coloured spheres. I completely flattened them and quite simply, painstakingly changed the shapes, changed the width, the length, all that kind of stuff. I just kept on moving them into place, slotting them in all the gaps, making very large, thin ones to like, create a bit of a, a defined line of the membrane. It was, like I said, a very painstaking part. It does take quite a long time, but in the end, I was very satisfied with the result. Once I'd finished with the wings, what I actually did was, because I knew I was getting to the point of convexity very soon, I had to change the colour of Drogon to its actual colour scheme that I need, which is simply a very dark, dusty red. And another thing I ended up doing, which I've never done before, is using my Reshade Me program, I went ahead and changed the general, as you can see right now, the general visuals of the game. I oversaturated it and changed the background. The reason for this is because I was live streaming at the time of making this and Drogon's dark red colour scheme on the pure black background because on the regular Duck Injections background is very very cluttered and hard to see. Whereas on the pure black background, again just because he is a dark colour it was kind of hard to see him. So I went ahead and used a couple of shaders to try and, you know, bring out the model a little bit more. I feel like I did a pretty good job, but it's quite interesting looking back on this because it really felt like I was in a completely different program altogether. It did give it like a very interesting, you know, different design. But that being said, we're currently on a phase now of doing all of the webbing? Membranes? Quills? I'm not sure what you'd call it here. The, the, the little frills and spikes and sails down, you know, running down his neck and back. At this point here, just like with the wings, it's pretty much just painstakingly, you know, placing every part, trying to angle it, trying to, you know, have to shrink them because they're not snapping properly, make them really tiny, bring them closer to the centre, and then expand them again, doing that again and again. And it's actually around here. It's either during the neck or during the back, or a tail, sorry. It was at some point around these two areas where I was doing all of this kind of membrane work. This is the point where at last the creature stopped animating. And like I said earlier, when the creation stopped animating, that means it cannot be saved. Can't be textured, can't be test can't be rendered, and it cannot be saved. So that is the point of no return. That is the point where it truly becomes a one-shot build and I have to really, really hope that I'm able to finish it before it crashes. So as you can imagine, like I said, it's a good bit of fun. I really, really enjoy doing these hyper detailed creations, but it's also a little bit nerve wracking knowing that every little action you do has a chance to crash the game. Because we all know just how how bad Spore is anyway. It crashes all the damn time. So, that being said, another point while we're doing all this membrane here, one thing I've got to mention here is I was actually making a lot of the little membrane pieces a lot smaller than intended, a lot smaller than they needed to be. And that is because what I noticed as I was progressing onwards was that it was really hard to have the membranes, you know, fit nice together and therefore have a nice seamless effect. The technique I'm about to describe is a lot more noticeable in the tail. As I work on the tail, you'll see that every part, every sail part is quite a bulbous. It's got like a very weird curved shape and it kind of just juts inwards again and again. It just looks really, really weird. The reason why I kept this is so that, first of all, I can place every part where I want it to be. I don't have to worry about overlapping it or anything like that. I'll place them where they are, make sure that they're in line, that they're in rhythm and such. And then, when I'm finished happy with the placements, I can then make them more larger, make them more longer, and then make it flow together a little bit better. It's just a very simple thing that is surprisingly hard to do while doing the creation. 
or while placing the parts. Or in this case, actually, what I also did was duplicated the parts. So I had multiple layers kind of stacked on top of each other. But again, you know, as you can see here, the overall result really does speak for itself, where it just creates a nice, smooth transition of, you know, the sail membrane part. I really don't know what to call that, the spines. <laughs> I'm really not sure. Then, of course, I had to go ahead and smooth them into the tail, because I had a very abrupt start. So, of course, we need to fix that. And I did a whole thing again a second time on the other detail. What I noticed with Drogon is that he has five of these things going down his neck and four of them going down his tail. So with his neck, he's got like the big center one and around his tail, he's got like a very flat surface where the membranes kind of flop downwards. At least in the reference I was looking at, I imagine these things can move around a lot. With all the sails, spines and membranes completed, the next step, of course, was the head. Now, this is something I was both extraordinarily excited to do and also really dreading because due to it being this big one-shot creation, the best way to get a uh, the best way to get a good looking head with zero textures and zero colours is to make them from scratch and to use a lot of flipped over parts. So this really was just pretty much a dive in and see what happens kind of thing. And I'm very happy with the result in the end as I feel like I kind of nailed it the more it goes on. At the beginning, as you can see here, it's just extremely lumpy and awkward and kind of weird looking. The mouth is very just odd, really. It's the best way I can come up with right now. It's very, very odd. But, like I said earlier when we were working with the feet, I did use slides of flipped over nail downs a lot here, because just like with the feet, I didn't want the textures to be completely flat. As much as I really like coloured spheres, and I do utilise them a lot here for the more subtle details, when it came to a lot of the bulk pieces of the head, especially the jaws, I use the flipped over nail downs, that way they have just that very subtle, well not really subtle actually, quite, uh, quite distracting, light brown texture scheme, or the light brown shapes. But that way, when I added in more parts later on, it came out a lot more subtle. And again, it just it just adds extra definition and extra noise to the creation, which is a thing I've really been trying to think about a lot more lately. And I do feel like it makes things come out a little bit better, look a little bit less flat, a little bit more 3D in a way, I guess. The teeth were very, very fun to do. At first, I was painstakingly making the teeth all like, you know, properly neat having more than like a such a particular direction all that kind of stuff and then as I got on more and more with it looking at my references I kind of realized the best way to do teeth and scales later on is just to do them fairly randomly because when you have the teeth be perfectly neat it just doesn't really look right especially for a dragon one thing I really love about Game of Thrones dragons is they look wild they look really really ferocious and one big thing about you know big ferocious creatures is their teeth are all over the place Look at the Indominus Rex as an example. Obviously, she has a reason for her teeth. I know that something happened that made her teeth a bit wonky. But again, it does a very, very good job of promoting that generally scary feel, doesn't it? And that's what I tried to obtain here as well. So just by simply placing the teeth a little bit randomly, very much outwards, so poking a lot of them, like especially the upper jaw, really do flex outwards. That way they're kind of ready to grip onto anything that they can. And it's just, again, much, much more ferocious appearance. But one thing that was very important to me was to have different varying lengths of size. Because when they're all originally the same size, just from, you know, very simple duplicating of the parts, they looked a bit too uniform and kind of weird. When I started just randomly shrinking and growing, you know, one tooth and shrinking the other and back and forth. And again, I've got to emphasize, I tried to do it very random, very rough, very quick here. And I really like the overall end, you know, the end result here. I also use the coloured spheres to try and give it some lips, which isn't a thing I normally bother with, but I felt like it did a very good job of one, hiding the base of the keratin horn parts, as they're normally a little bit ugly and bulbous, but mainly too, it added just that, you know, that really subtle but massive deal of um, definition to the jaw. Since before I added the little lips in, it was looking kind of round, but just a really, really simple additional part, that big flat coloured sphere part just under the teeth, and all of a sudden it just looks so much better in my opinion. It really gave the jaw, like it turned the jaw from weirdly triangular or curved to angular. And that's just the thing I kind of wanted for Drogon here was a big angular jaw. Very powerful looking, hence the very large bottom jaws. But next up is Drogon's horns on his head. Now for this I tried to use a bunch of different techniques, starting off with the actual horn parts. And I realised that the colours just really weren't doing it for me in the end. So I went and stuck with the ethereal razor parts, which is the little spiky things I use for the claws on the back feet. 
I use this, that way one, it would be a consistent colour scheme with the claws as well, since I imagine I made out the same, well not the same, but a similar material. They typically look the same on a lot of creatures in terms of the colour scheme. So I went with the Ethereal Razor, that way as well it's a bit more consistent in the creation itself. And of course, because it's a lot more poseable, a lot more durable, I can do a lot more with it. So, I use the Ethereal Razor for the large two spikes. Right now I'm kind of experimenting with different pieces to get an idea for the spikes later on. When it comes to Drogon's face, so like I said earlier, these are the parts I was really dreading when it came to making these dragons in general, the wings and the faces, because their faces are so characteristic. Now fortunately, for anyone who has seen episode one of season eight, there is this really incredible shot of Drogon's face head on. And fortunately there was pictures of that all over Google, so that made a really, really great reference for me to get the front angle, let alone the dozens and dozens of images from the side angles. So I was able to get like a pretty good idea, a pretty good up-to-date idea of how to do the face. And in the end, it just involved just slapping on so many spikes and horns, which I'm pretty sure is why the game crashed before I could finish it. The As you see later on in the creation, the face gets pretty wild. Especially considering it's already got so much work done in the teeth alone. When it came to the eyes, I decided to go with the grey eyes because I can't really see what exactly coloured eyes Drogon has in general. But as I mentioned, that really iconic front forward, you know, angle from, from uh, episode one. That one had greyish kind of eyes. I was stuck with that in the end and that way it was just a bit more subtle. They weren't piercing. They're very sharp looking, but they don't, you know, they're not too distracting from the rest of the face. That's the big thing I noticed with the dragons is their eyes kind of hide a little bit in, you know, among among all the detail, which is what I'm starting to come out with here. Just lots and lots and lots of spikes. I started with doing lots of individual spikes all over the place. That alone looked pretty good. But then I decided to take it to the next level and use some hair like mate pieces. Very weird name there. <laughs> some of the hair like mate pieces to just, again, add in so much noise. And I actually did a pretty good job of making these spikes a little bit more of a similar colour to the rest of the creation. To like the, um, the membranes and sails and such. So I quite liked it, but like I said, it added an insane amount of complexity in terms of like visual complexity as opposed to game mechanic complexity. So with the face pretty much done, at least for now, I've not done the bottom jaw yet, but I wanted to move on for a moment. We're moving to the bulbous chest. I say bulbous because it really is very weird looking to me and therefore I felt like it needed a lot of detail to really kind of bring it to life because up until this point, it's just a weird giant chest. It's got a bit of muscles, which really helped out. But now that the creation is darker color scheme, you can't really see it properly. But I've also noticed that in every angle in Game of Thrones that you see Drogon or either dragon's chests actually, especially when they're flying, they are very, very heavily scaled, which is probably why they look so bulbous. So I figured that's an important feature to have in this creation here. And I'm glad I did it, because I really feel like it brought it out a lot more. It made it more than just this weird shape. It really added a bit more life to it. Also to add the little fold of skin around the neck, another thing I noticed is that the necks are very, I don't want to say saggy per se, but they're definitely very wrinkly. they got a lot going on. And that's another just very subtle, but very, very key detail to have in these kind of creatures, especially in Spore. They don't animate very well per se, so this is a technique I don't always use because the animation can be very horrendous. But again, in this one-shot creation that is clearly not animating, you know, I can afford to add every little bit I want. And what's really cool about these big saggy necks here is that they also do a very good job of like having little spikes on the end and it just kind of, again, it just like adds an entire new dimension to the creature. For the little chin spikes or neck spikes, whatever you want to call it, I was originally going to use the ethereal razor just like I did for the horns on the face, but the color scheme was just, for that area, it just felt too abrupt. I then tried to use a flipped over shell shard, I think, a piece I used on a chest, the big scales, but again, it just felt kind of weird. So I ended up using horror lumps here. Now, they're probably going to be the wrong colour scheme, but I feel like they're not too different than what I have everywhere else in the creation. I feel like the general colour scheme of the whole thing kind of fits together quite well. At this stage here, as happy as I was with the head, I was really, really pleased to have the head coming out. The eyes, I did say earlier that the eyes are kind of hidden, but in the creation, they felt too hidden. They also just felt kind of there and plain. So I decided to get some of the flipped over shell shard pieces, give a bit of an eyebrow, which I don't think it really has in Game of Thrones, but it's a little thing in Spore that really helps bring it out a little bit more. 
it just helps give it that ferocious look. Next up, after fixing the eyes, I went ahead and used the same technique I used on the chest, on the shoulders as well. And since the chest was this great big, you know, spiky, feathery, well not feathery, but it kind of has a bit of the appearance as well. This great big, you know, fuzzy area, I felt like the shoulders needed it as well. Another great big open mass of, you know, scales and skin and such. Again, it just felt really, it just felt necessary. And I really do think that once again, it's added like a bit more of a dimension to the creation. It's very hard to describe, it probably doesn't make much sense, but I think you can agree with it when you see the actual creation itself. With the wings, so like I said, we're working a little bit more on the wings now, trying to get the little thumb claws, which I'd forgotten earlier. Ended up just duplicating the toes and the feet. And I tried to add a little bit of extra flesh around the fingers, if you will, around the wings, because like I said earlier, I did not mean to use the purple. Using the purple is a big mistake, but it actually does quite a good job of contrasting the membrane here. You can very distinctly see where everything is, where it all places. But at the same time, it still kind of felt a bit a bit weird. And the wings in particular, compared to the rest of the creation, felt very flat. So I had to try and add just something there. Once again, a bit of noise, as I keep on saying earlier. And in this scenario, all I very simply used were flipped over nail downs. Like I said earlier, that very, very subtle little tanned line that the nail downs add is such a small little thing, and yet it just does such a good job of adding noise elsewhere. The final, final thing I did on this creation before it crashed was a little bit more work on the tail. So I noticed that the tip of the tail, in contrast to the head, just felt very plain. So what I started doing was I added, started adding spines into the tail, which is a thing that is in Game of Thrones. They do have like very, very large spines poking out the tail. And I was absolutely loving how it was going. So I just kept on doing it and I was planning on bringing it all the way back to the base of the tail so the, or the entire uh, membrane along the tail would be covered in spines. But unfortunately, this is the part where Spore crashed. I simply duplicated one horror lump and the game just said no. It froze up and it outright closed the desktop. So sadly, I did not get to finish the creation in the end, but I was damn well close. And in the end, I was really, really happy with the overall progress. So like I said, guys, I will be doing this again in the future. I will be making some, some regular animated versions. That way we can appreciate the colors and the textures. And that way we can have the Sarian and the Frost one as well. Can't remember the name. That way we can have all three dragons. And I might maybe do a mega build in the future. That way we can have a more stable hyper detailed version. Right, so I've been talking for a lot. I apologize if any of it was rushed, but I'm not used to speaking. It's been the process of a creation this long, but I hope it was enjoyable and I hope you learned a lot. As always guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.